By now, you know the drill. Lay her down. Slot it in. Start screwing. There, all done in 15 seconds. Using a Jetty 1511 spectral radiometer to analyze the spectral power distribution of our LG G2 review sample, we confirmed the presence of a WBE panel, as evidenced by the narrower blue half-width, as well as clearer separation between the green and red peaks. If we compare the subpixel configuration on the 65-inch LG G2 versus last year's 65-inch LG G1, captured at the same magnification, there's a visible change in the shape of the green subpixel, as well as less space in between the subpixels on the G2, tying in with the development of OLED EX panel by supplier LG Display. And since the LG G1 and G2 both use WBE panels, it is not a difference caused by WBC versus WBE. Because of its larger pixel aperture ratio, and more importantly, the implementation of an additional heat dissipation layer, the G2 is comfortably LG's brightest OLED TV to date. We still need to run in our review sample for at least 100 hours for a definitive peak brightness figure, but here are some initial measurements to whet your appetite. First, we profile a calorimetry research CR100 meter against a CR250 RH spectral radiometer, otherwise we wouldn't be able to trust the results. Then, in the most accurate filmmaker mode picture preset out of the box, we measured a peak brightness of 930 nits on a 10% window and 170 nits full field, allowing for the most impactful HDR presentation seen on an LG OLED television to date. To take full advantage of this higher peak brightness level, the South Korean brand has also updated the HGIG clipping point on the G2 Gallery Series OLED. On the second HDR calibration screen found on the Xbox Series X, which allows you to set the max TML or maximum tone map luminance, the LG G2 only started clipping at 1000 nits with HGIG engaged, which is brighter than the usual 800 nits implemented on LG OLEDs. Likewise, the third calibration screen for max FFTML or maximum full frame tone map luminance also clipped at 1000 nits with HGIG enabled on the television. With these parameters in place, I expect the LG G2 to deliver the most accurate yet impactful HDR for HGIG compliant games, given that LG OLEDs have traditionally featured well-implemented HGIG support that works harmoniously together with 4K 120Hz VRR. Another advantage conferred by the heatsink on the LG G2 is quicker dispersion of image retention. Here, I've set up a 48-inch C2 and the 65-inch G2 side by side, both have been confirmed to be equipped with WBE OLED panels based on their spectral output. After displaying a 10% window in HDR at full blast for 10 seconds, I switched to a full field gray slide, and hopefully you can see that the image retention went away quicker on the LG G2, thanks to its additional heat dissipation layer. Note that just like the G1 and GX OLEDs over the past couple of years, the LG G2 is a gallery series OLED that's meant to be wall-mounted, and so doesn't ship with a tabletop stand which you have to purchase separately. There's good news, however. This video is sponsored by richardsounds.com who offers excellent customer service and 6-year warranty on all TV purchases. If you're thinking about getting an LG G2, please consider buying from them through the link in the YouTube description below. The optional tabletop stand for the G2 occupies less space and looks more elegant than the previous duck feet version available for the G1. Thanks to the use of composite fiber material, the 65-inch LG G2 weighed noticeably lighter than last year's G1. I certainly had no problem lifting the television all by myself to be placed onto a TV stand. Inspected from the side, the OLED screen leans slightly backwards when mounted on the central tabletop stand, but similar to what I experienced with Sony's lean-back OLED TVs, I quickly got used to it within a few minutes. What I care about is picture quality, and based on my first impressions, the LG G2 is certainly shaping up to be one of the best TVs you can buy in 2022, thanks to the inclusion of a heatsink which unlocks its beast mode. Of course, I will still need to do my full in-depth review of this television, which you can watch by clicking here.